there's a little bit less like, and a little bit more like, there's less like, you're not like, whoa. And you're not like, whoa, you're just right like, okay, cool. Oh. The Ultra Boost line has always been about style, but can the Ultra Boost Lite be more about running? So just a quick disclaimer before we get into the shoe, I am an REI employee and these shoes were provided for review, but the opinions I'm expressing are all mine based on my experience in the shoes. So this is the Adidas Ultra Boost Lite. The shoe's coming in at 10.3 ounces per shoe. There's 29 millimeters of stack height in the heel and 19 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot with 10 millimeters of drop throughout. So if we take a look at the shoe from top to bottom, the first thing that we'll notice is the upper. The upper's got that classic Ultra Boost look, pretty similar to that knit look that you've noticed in maybe the Ultra Boost 22, which is the Ultra Boost Lite's direct predecessor. So it's got that prime knit technology from Adidas. It's also got Forge 2.0 technology, which should make the knit a little bit tighter and a little bit less easy to stretch out over time. Talking about kind of keeping the fit a little bit more secure in the upper, which is a challenge when you have kind of a knit upper like this, they They've added an extra eyelet here to the plastic cages on both sides, giving you a little bit more of a locked-in feel there. Going towards the back of the shoe, you'll notice again that just classic design touch that Adidas has. So kind of a low cut, but then comes up a little bit higher in the heel. The other thing that's really easy to notice about the shoe is the midsole. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of midsole, uh, especially in the heel. So this is going to be the Ultra Boost Light technology. So this is going to be about 30% lighter than the Ultra Boost midsole technology that they had been using prior. So considerably lighter weight. It's also supposed to give you about 4% more energy return. So still kind of like walking that line, but doing it in a really positive way. Obviously lighter being the focus there. Turning the shoe over, you'll notice the outsole. You'll see that on the back of the heel, you have the kind of more rubberized portion, but it's not too thick. You get towards the midsole and you get a little bit thicker and stiffer. And then towards the forefoot of the shoe, then you start to see the continental rubber on there. Also towards the forefoot, you'll notice that if you look at the midsole in between the Ultra Boost Light technology and the continental rubber, you have this kind of plastic plate that gives you a little bit more of that energy return. To me, it feels a little bit more like it dampens that squish that could exist from some of the Ultra Boost Light just kind of sinking in there. So if you're someone that hasn't thought about gait cycle or maybe even what your foot strike looks like, this shoe kind of is really interesting because it gives you lots of visual cues for that. It kind of helps you understand your run or guide your run a little bit more. Again, the outsole is broken up into like three different colors almost or three different zones. And if you think about going through the full gait cycle, you get to the heel, you transition into the midfoot, which is a little bit different of a, a compound on the outsole. And then you get the firmest compound on the toe off so that you can kind of bounce right off, which is pretty cool. Even thinking about the ride of the midsole, again, you have probably the softest landing here, getting a little bit more firm and then the most energy response there in the midsole. So this shoe is kind of cool because it's like, oh, how does my running work? It works maybe like that. There's not a lot of running outsoles that show you what transitions look like. And honestly, not a lot of outsoles that have dedicated transition differences on their outsoles. So yeah, it's a pretty cool piece of technology. So there's really three key updates from the Ultra Boost 22 to the Ultra Boost Lite. And the first one, it's its namesake, right? So you have Ultra Boost Lite compound in the midsole, which is 30% lighter than the previous version midsole. You have the Forge 2.0 technology in the knit upper, making it a less stretchy knit upper. And then you have the extra eyelet here in the cage, giving you a more secure fit. So I think one of the things that really sold me on the Ultra Boost Lite compared to the Ultra Boost 22 is just the more secure fit in the upper. For me, I came to the shoe thinking that like, I had some hesitations around it, right? I thought it was just like, a stylish shoe that some people like to wear to run. Now the shoe feels like a running shoe that is stylish, right? And it really comes down to the security of the fit. So I feel like when I put my foot in there, it feels pretty comfortable and that's pretty nice. But this extra eyelet really helps me dial in a fit, right? And it's kind of strange because you think, this has still got to be the running shoe with the least amount of eyelets. I mean, they're like, what about four? <laughs> four is still pretty low. So like there is no heel lock tie. I mean, you can get creative, but there's not a lot of adjustments that you could do on this shoe. But I do feel like that extra eyelet really helps me dial in the fit. And especially because the shoe doesn't feel as stretchy as its previous versions, then it feels like I can get more security out of it. And now like this plastic cage actually feels like it's doing something to hug me there. 
Before it just felt like, why is there heavy plastic in the middle of the shoe? And now it feels like this cage is actually, again, a little bit more utilitarian and it dials in the fit more for the upper, keeping me comfortable while I'm moving, perhaps in different ways. So I just took the Ultra Boost Lite out for a half marathon. It was the first time that I actually put them on my feet. This is also actually my first organized half marathon. I'm coming to learn that I kind of love the half marathon distance. You know, I think about the Ultra Boost shoe as a shoe that like I can train in, as a shoe that I can take when I kind of want to maybe not be pushing pace a little bit more, when I want to be a little bit more mellow. I mean, there's a lot of cushion in the shoe throughout the shoe. So I, I didn't know how it was going to perform. One of the things that I was excited about for this half marathon was that I was going to be running it with friends. So it was kind of cool to push pace in it a little bit more and then to also relax in it. I felt that the shoes certainly had a certain amount of energy response that was different when I was trying to run a little bit faster than when I was trying to be a little bit more mellow. All in all, I think the shoe kept me comfortable a lot right after I uh, got through the finish line. The transition to walking in these shoes is super comfy. <laughs> Sometimes I think in like race shoes or faster shoes, like you just feel like they're really stiff. So walking around in them feels kind of awkward when you're not moving in a really intentional way. And this felt just like, oh, okay, cool. If I'm running slow, it's cool. If I was running fast, it was cool. If I was walking, it was cool. So overall, initial impressions of the shoe are that they're a comfortable shoe that could, you know, stay comfortable whatever pace you're kind of pushing. So after spending 13 miles in the shoe, I think that this is going to be an awesome shoe for folks that are looking to have fun on their runs and stay comfortable throughout their runs, but are also looking for like a little bit of cushion and energy return. And you might think like, well, that's all running shoes, right? <laughs> but this one does this in kind of a unique way, right? Like there's not a lot of complexity to the shoe, right? There's four eyelets. It's a sock knit upper. It's like, cool. So you got security and comfort dialed into the upper part of the shoe. And then you got cushioning and then just a little bit of energy return and like cushion dampening technology in the forefoot of the shoe. So it's going to give you all those things in very specific ways, perhaps more specific ways than some other running shoes. I also think the shoe would be a great shoe for somebody that does really go through the full gait cycle. I mean, again, like one of the things that this shoe does well and actually does that other shoes don't do like straight up don't do is this transitional zone outsole like so it is cool that it can take you all the way from heel to toe off and you can experience a different part of your running gait cycle throughout and that technology is going to be really prevalent there so if you're somebody that's like well i do like to go through the full gait cycle or if you're somebody that lands in a specific place that doesn't go through the full gait cycle but says like you know what i really just like a really comfy shoe throughout a lot of my runs and even like today i thought half marathon was a perfect perfect distance to just want to be comfortable in. I think for a lot of folks, right when you get to that point of like discomfort, you're like, okay, it's almost over. <laughs> um, so like this shoe is a great shoe for that because like the shoe is not one of those things that's adding to the discomfort. The name of the shoe is, is comfort in my mind. And it's nice to see that the running focus design updates are really going to just make the shoes shine a little bit more. And I think you're going to see it a little bit more out in some races or even around your neighborhood as people take them out for daily runs a little bit more. So that's my experience in the Ultra Boost Lite, but I'd love to hear from you all. When you think about Adidas running, is the Ultra Boost one that comes to mind? What's been your experience in the Ultra Boost line so far? Leave a comment below, I'd love to read them. If you make it Ultra Boost, is that cool? Certainly just like, yeah. Oh, hey, hey! Uh, <laughs> propul propul <laughs> it's starting to feel more like a runting, uh, a runting. <laughs> what the f***? A renting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>